Hi guys and welcome to the Selling with Sanity podcast. So today we're going to be talking about loneliness as a reseller. Um, But before we just get on to that topic, I actually did have a comment on last week's video. And uh, I won't read out all of it, but I'll just read out the last bit. It's from a guy called Jason. um, And he says, my mental health does not stop me buying and selling. It helps me. So I believe what he means by that is basically he gets a lot of enjoyment out of buying and selling and it's the thing that has actually helped him um, get through some of the mental health issues he's been suffering with. And he does explain a little bit more in the comment as well. Um, But I'll just read that bit out. I I don't know whether he would like me to read out the full comment on the podcast, but I did just want to read that little uh, section out there. And it's actually very true because... What I've been talking about mainly on this podcast is the areas of my reselling that I struggle uh, with my mental health issues. However, the one thing that I haven't actually um, sort of dived into, I suppose, on this podcast is the fact that reselling was the one thing when I uh, started to get anxiety it was the one thing that actually helped me. Nothing else really would help me, or I felt that nothing else would help me um, sort of fight or accept my uh, mental health issues, but reselling could take me away from it for for a little bit. So I thought it's actually important to uh, stay on a little bit of a positive with that and and sort of um, vocalise a positive argument of that because it's something that in this podcast I haven't talked about. I've constantly talked about over the last uh, few weeks about the areas of reselling that I really am struggling in. Um, But essentially, the one thing that helped me at the start and really get me back to where I wanted to be is the reselling. The reselling was the one thing that I absolutely loved doing and that could take me away from my mental health issues. So maybe um, over the past couple of years, my motivation for it has uh, dwindled a little bit and maybe that's why in certain areas of my reselling, Um, my anxiety does take control a little bit more. But certainly in the beginning, as Jason's identified with there, it is a massive um, stepping stone to getting out of uh, these issues. I don't know why it is. I don't know what it is about reselling and buying and selling um, that helps mental health. I don't know what it is. I suppose it is quite a uh, nice act, actually, in terms of... Um, the the act of buying something it, buying something, listing it, then selling it, then packaging it up and uh, seeing it go out the door. It's quite a therapeutic process in going from A to B to C and knowing that obviously the customer's got the item, you've got the money and everything is completed and closed up. I think it is quite satisfying that process. So that might be actually a part of it, but I did just want to start on a positive there and something that I've not actually uh, touched on in this podcast so far. So the topic today, I don't know whether you can see by this photo, um, I wanted to choose a photo that represented loneliness. I think this does it okay. I think this is an, an okay photo to represent that. But I wanted to talk about loneliness as a reseller. Now, obviously, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now, I was talking about uh, social media and how that can be uh, sometimes be a positive um, effect. It can have a positive effect on your reselling and on your life um, and on your business life as well. And sometimes it can have a negative effect. Um, Well, if you were to cut out social media entirely, for example, then you're going to come across uh, certainly loneliness with um, a a bigger... It's going to impact you in a bigger way than it would if you were on social media, at least. So this this doesn't really apply just to people with a mental health illness or someone who's struggling in that way. This can just apply to any reseller. It really can. Uh, We all get lonely in reselling. Um, I kind of think like people with mental health issues it troubles them more when they're lonely because obviously their anxiety, their depression can start to come into play because maybe they they can obviously go uh, jump into their work for a certain amount of time but at the same time sometimes if you're really depressed on one day or really anxious 
it, it takes you away from your work somewhat and then you just get, get into this sort of circle of uh, not wanting to do anything and then that makes it worse when you're not doing anything, you're not being active, it makes the anxiety, it makes the depression worse um, and then obviously being lonely as well uh, doesn't help that. So I think that if, um, you know, if you have social media or something like that, it can um, help you out a little bit. Um, but saying that, if you are um, just struggling with loneliness in a general sense, you maybe don't have, um, you know, any mental health illness or anything like that, um, it, it, reselling is just unfortunately one of those business models that has that um, within it, really. It's just a, quite a lonely business. I mean, there are a few things you can do to get out of this, you know, and to actually... Um, basically get over this loneliness so obviously there's there's always things you can do with anything um so i wanted to touch on those and try and keep it a bit more positive than going down the route of, of talking about all the different negative things with it but certainly i mean joining a club if you feel and and it's hard for me to say this because i know that not everyone who um you know has a mental health illness or issue will uh want to join a club or will want to go um, you know, and do exercise with people in a social group or go out to a social gathering or something like that. I understand that most people um, in that situation might not want to do that. However, if you can get that um, that sort of courage to be able to at least try and do that and take an action, then um, you may feel um, better in yourself in the long term and the short term and feel less lonely. Because in the day, let's say... Uh, and again, this applies to anyone. It doesn't matter whether you've got a, a mental health issue or you haven't. It applies to anyone. Within the day, when you're reselling, you're listing, you're sorting, you're testing, you're cleaning, all that sort of stuff. And that's brilliant. You're obviously enhancing your business in a lot of different ways. That is completely 100% fine. But obviously then, if you're not doing anything during the day, maybe at the night time, um, anything social or even just trying to fit something social in the daytime then you're going to go to bed feeling like yeah you may have accomplished things today but did you really see anyone did you really do anything towards your sort of personal life and the fact is I've gone to bed feeling like that a few times I've, got, I've gone to bed and I've also got up feeling um, like I've not quite I, I don't know it feels like I've not filled a hole within the day that maybe I would have liked to fill in the social sense of the world. So I've not feel, filled the um, hole in the day in a social sense. So I've not seen um, anyone or I've not done anything uh, personally that would make me feel complete when I go to sleep or make me feel energized when I get up in the morning, having, having known that I've done something brilliant uh, socially the day before or I am going to do something socially today or tomorrow. Um, now, there is one thing I wanted to talk about. I've just realised it, uh, remembered it a couple of minutes ago, actually. Um, is I said on my last podcast, it would be very hard for me to go swimming. And I elaborated about um, going swimming and the fears I had and stuff like that. And, and fears in, in my life, other than reselling as well. Um... But if you haven't checked out that podcast, what I would advise you do is just pause this podcast here, go and check out that podcast because I'm going to be following on in a second uh, to that podcast to what I was talking about uh, with regards to swimming. And I think that it might be best if you actually go back, watch the segment of that podcast where I was talking about this, then come back to this one because you will feel a sense of uh, more direction of what I'm actually talking about. So basically... On Wednesday it was, yeah it was Wednesday, it's Thursday today, it's actually Thursday about half four. Um, I normally record this podcast on a Friday but I thought today I've got a spare half an hour so I will record it now. So essentially on Wednesday, which was yesterday, I actually went swimming. Now I know to a lot of people um, that might not be anything, it might be yes, great you went swimming but what's so good about that, I mean... I do it all the time. I go swimming twice a week. Da 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 da. I do fifty lengths in the pool. Da 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 da. And I I understand. You know I understand where you're coming from. It to most people going swimming isn't a task. It's quite easy. Um, but to me it's 
I often think about someone who walks a mountain or someone walks down a street, right? You could have someone walk 200 meters down a street or you could have someone w w walk, I don't know, five miles up a mountain or whatever. And if that person who's walking down the street 200 meters has anxiety or depression, then the it feels as if they are walking up that five miles of a mountain. And I've always thought inside myself, now I've had a mental health il illness, I've always kind of thought that person walking down that street, it is as hard as someone walking up a mountain and they deserve just as much respect for doing that and facing up to that and having the courage to do that as the person who walked that mountain. Yes, that achievement of the person who walked the mountain, you could say is greater uh, in terms of a physical achievement, which it is because they've walked further. Um, and you could say in some ways they've pushed themselves harder. However, on a mental sense, that person who's walked that 200 meters down the street could have been pushing themselves mentally to try and do that thing just as hard as someone who was getting to the fifth mile, walking up that mountain, maybe the oxygen's getting a little bit thin and they're really trying to push themselves. They may have pushed themselves harder physically, but mentally, the two people might have been pushing themselves just as much. And I've always thought about that and I've thought to myself, well, if that is some way the case, I mean, I don't know whether that is the case. Uh, I don't know whether there's any, been, any tests been done, any studies been done about that, but if that is the case, then getting in a pool for me is just like walking a mountain. That If I can try and relate that to you and how, how hard it is for me. I got in the car and I was feeling incredibly anxious and I got to the place finally and I thought, what's the point in me doing this? Because I know that if I do it, I'm just going to have to push again. And, you know, if I don't do it very well, I'm going to go home. I'm going to not want to do it again. And if I do try and do it again, I'm going to have to push harder the next time. And uh, my anxiety is going to be more fierce. So I thought, I don't want to do this. All that, you know, what I was doing is letting my anxiety take control because it's easier for me to do that in one respect. Oh, I won't go swimming. I, I don't want to face up to my anxiety. So I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll make up these things to try and get out of it and we can go home and it'll be fine. But the fact is it wouldn't have been fine if I didn't have, uh, do it because I would have just gone worse and worse over time. So Instead, I sat down and uh, we were going to pay and I tried to break it up into the little steps and I think I did that quite efficiently actually. Um, and I sat down and I thought, give myself a few minutes, then we'll go to the counter. Immediately we went to the counter and um, I felt some anxiety there because right now when you're paying to go swimming, there's a commitment level there in my eyes. So I think to myself, well, I've I paid my money now, I've got to go in, I've got to do it now, there's no way out. So I feel trapped and I feel a little bit more anxiety. So I, I was paying and, and then she said how much it was and then she said six quid. And I thought, oh my God, since I was young, swimming has gone up in price. Because I swear I remember it being like four quid or something or three pound fifty or something. But anyway, that's another topic, the daylight robbery of the leisure centres, but anyway, if ever I uh, set up a leisure centre, please do remind me to charge reasonable prices for swimming, at about £3 a head, but anyway, um, that's bit, that's here and there, however, it did distract me from my anxiety a little bit, because I thought, oh my god, six quid, that's a lot, um, so I went in, uh, went into the cubicle, you know, got changed, all that sort of stuff, won't go into graphic detail on that, um, but I went in, got changed, and I have a very big fear of being close to my body so I admit many times on Thursday talks and on other videos you'll have seen me with hoodies on or you'll have seen me with coats on that is because I don't like being close to my body uh, my anxiety is specific to being human and having a body and having organs I do not like that um, I fear my own body I know you should never really fear your own body it's a beautiful tool 
but I do, uh, in a lot of senses of the word, I feel my own body. So I got the change uh, in the sense of putting my trunks on. However, I couldn't take my T-shirt off. It was a barrier to me. And I walked over to the showers and I'm thinking, oh my God, the showers are going to be too hot. And then that's going to stimulate my anxiety or something. Uh, and I kept walking back in two, pacing up back in two, thinking to myself, I don't want to do this. I locked myself in my locker for about... 20 minutes my mum went into the pool and uh, she came out of the pool and uh, you know came looking for me or whatever and I said I was in the locker I opened up the locker and I was spouting off to her saying I don't want to do this I, I don't like the anxiety all, all this sort of stuff and uh, I decided I'll go back to the showers and I, I won't do anything I'll just go back to the showers anyway after a lot of pacing back and forth and you know the drill if you suffer with anxiety or even depression or anything like that there's a lot of back and forth there's a lot of really it's like a tug of war with your with your mental health illness or mental health uh, issue it's it's like this tug of war where you're trying to there's you and then there's your then there's your kind of it's almost I almost think of it as an entity there's this entity and then there's you and you're trying to distinguish what what this entity is telling you and what you're wanting as a person. And the fact is, I uh, took I went in the shower and I dipped my toe in the showers, um, felt that it was an okay temperature, took my shirt off, got in the shower and I was feeling a little bit better. I thought, hang on a minute, I can do this. I can actually do this now. And I know this must sound really weird to, to someone who doesn't have these issues um but I, all i can say is that it is very very hard it, it is the equivalent to me in my mind of climbing a mountain it really is um and i got in the shower and i was like right i can do this i can do this walked over to the pool i got in i didn't even have to take um much time to actually get in i just got in i felt the temperature oh, it was nice temperature walked down the stairs got in i was feeling a little bit of anxiety obviously when you're in a, a bit of a slightly more heightened state of anxiety uh, for me what i've identified is that when i'm in water i can actually feel every single drop on my body um, because obviously you're a lot more sensitive to things around you when you're in anxiety. In fact, anxiety or, or the flight or fight fight response shouldn't really be something to uh, fear because it's actually a, a positive response to help you get out of a situation that's potentially dangerous. However, uh, with, when, with people who have anxiety, they let that fight or flight response come up in situations where it doesn't actually need to come up. Um, uh, luckily, I didn't actually go into the flight or fight response. However, I did have what I would consider sort of level two level three anxiety uh, level one being where you can start to hear uh, sounds around you and little noises around you start to irritate you a little bit level two or level three uh, being you know a little bit of an increased heart rate um, things going on in your body that you know is, is getting to you a little bit but you can still control it to some degree and then level four being full-out pan panic attack basically um, so yeah, I was kind of sort of level two, level three anxiety in my, own, in my own mind. So I thought I can, I can do this. I can control it. I'm all right. And I did. I actually took a few strokes as well. I did a few breath strokes in there, which I was really pleased with. Um, and I felt like I've done something. And I felt I, you may will, uh, you may. Um, remember last week I actually said that uh, someone commented on a video. I think it was Andy Robinson who said that he was in a place of. Uh, thinking that things were now attainable to him. Um, and for me, last week, I wasn't in that place. I always kept thinking, well, I'm not in that place now. I, I, I think things aren't obtainable for me. However, now I've done swimming, I know I can go back there tomorrow and it'll be a lot easier. And now I know that I can do other things uh, to help me, you know, go te go to tennis, go to other ex do other exercise, and that's brilliant. And, it, and that's all you need. You only need to feel as if you can do it, and then that anxiety will move out of your way once you believe that. You have to believe you can do it, not just think you can do it, but believe you can do it. And I promise you, after a little bit of time, your anxiety is going to move out of the way. I'm not going to say it's going to be completely you know in a split second click of the fingers but it will move out your way given a little bit of time and then you will be left to get on with it as long as it is something that you really truly love to do and swimming is one of those things that's why i was able to do it because before my anxiety 
I uh, really loved swimming, so I knew that it, I wanted to do it with just my anxiety holding me back. But anyway, I've rambled for about 10 minutes on that, so I really do apologise about that. Um, we will get back to the topic now. I did want to highlight that because in these podcasts, I don't just want to be talking um, about you know different things in reselling. I do want to actually document my own uh, journey of my mental health um, and how I'm progressing um, because it's something to look back on and also it helps me uh, define where I am in my journey as well to actually getting through this and, and getting to a better life, you know, a better quality of life and being able to do different things. But anyway, we'll get back to the topic. So um, in terms of, it actually quite, it does actually tie in nicely in one respect because Going swimming like that is something that you can actually do to beat the loneliness of Wiesheim. Now, you might be thinking, well, if I go swimming on my own, I'm still going to feel quite lonely in the pool. Well, yeah, that is true to a certain extent. But even just being with other people in the pool, not even necessarily talking or or just even just saying hi to someone uh, in the pool, just being around that environment, being with other people might make you feel a little bit better. It doesn't have to be swimming. It can be any form of exercise. It can be any form of um, hobby or any, anything like that. It, can, it really can be anything. Um, it can be as simple as just walking to the, uh, your local paper shop and if you can, have a little chat with the, the owner there for, for 10, 20 minutes. It's something. It doesn't matter on what level you are at. It doesn't matter how how little amount of time you can spend with people. If you have social anxiety, it doesn't even matter that you just go out and you just literally can raise your head up for a second, a split second, and look at someone else or just get that one word in of saying hi. If you can do that, then that's brilliant. That's that's a step in the right direction for you on your journey. It really doesn't matter how um, much you do. It's just about where you're at in your journey and how much you feel is comfortable for you at that time. For me, I'm okay socially. I'm I'm fairly okay with my anxiety socially, um, which I am grateful for. You know, I'm grateful for the fact that I don't have social anxiety. That isn't uh, necessarily a part of my anxiety. Um, it manifests itself in a different way. Um, and that's like like it is for most of us. So, you know, for example, some people might have an anxiety with uh, heights or something like that. Myself, I wouldn't say I'm massively scared of heights or anything, but there is a fear there. Um, so it, it it all is different for everyone. You know, these anxiety drivers, these kind of things that trigger us are different for everyone. But if you can just do a little bit outside your comfort zone that you're still, you know, you're still in control, but you do a little bit outside your comfort zone, then that's brilliant. And if you can get to that point, then that is brilliant. So, you know, if you are feeling lonely and in your reselling, doing these things at night time, or maybe if you don't want to go out at night time, if you have some sort of complex like that, like I do, I don't like going out after 7 p.m. I don't know why. I just don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. It's another anxiety factor for me going out after sort of 6, 7 p.m. I've done it on occasion, but I, I don't, for whatever reason, I don't like it and I need to get over that. And funnily enough, tomorrow actually, I'm meeting uh, my man in the van at the lockup to uh, bring back 22 boxes of auction stock at about 7 p.m. So I'm going to be challenging that tomorrow night, which is another positive. Um, so whatever you can do, try and fit something. It doesn't have to be every day. It maybe once a week, something like that. Set something that's achievable or that maybe you don't feel as achievable. Like for me, I, I set the goal of going swimming on Monday after I had a counselling session. I was feeling very, very high from that. I set the goal of going swimming. I didn't even think it was achievable. Honestly, I didn't. But after a lot of stress, a lot of uh, you know anxiousness, a lot of pacing about, I managed to do it and I felt so good about it and I am going to actually uh, try to go swimming within the next few days as well to keep on top of it and keep that anxiety at bay with that specific activity because if I drop the ball for any more than two or three weeks I know that I'm going to be back to square one and I'm going to feel more anxious with going swimming again. So yeah, try once a week, just embrace that 
one thing that's slightly outside your comfort zone and try your best to do it. Break it up into small, manageable steps. So for me, what I did was I got to the swimming baths. That was the first step. I got to the swimming baths and I thought to myself, I've already won. I've done it. I've got here. That's a big step achieved. Then I paid. Then I went. To, that's one step, then, uh, you know, paying. Then I went to the uh, changing rooms, da, 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 and I broke it up into steps. And that helped me massively because if I didn't do that and I just went straight for it, I would have been much worse than I actually was. So, um, yeah, try and do these things. Try and connect with people. If uh, you can, if you feel like you're kind of uh, up to this, go out with friends, do things with friends, just go around friends' houses, that sort of stuff. And as I say, social media can be a good one, but at the same time, it's kind of... Um, it can be one that can help and harm you. So obviously, uh, social media can feel like you're connecting with people, which you are in, in most ways, you know, in direct messages, things like that. However, um, you know, if things go on in the groups, like I mentioned last week or the week before, sorry, um, if things go on, a little bit, a bit of conflict there, it can sometimes send you down a little bit. So um, I would encourage more actually going out socially and face-to-face -face interaction um, and, and trying to get out of the kind of and beating the loneliness that way. Um, but if you would like to, then you can always use social media a little bit as well. Um, and, and even things like, aside from actually being social, I know it kind of feels a bit weird talking about beating loneliness and not being social, but actually being on your own, but in the, uh, in nature, you know, in the outside world, in the environment outside, that can sometimes help you. So, uh, for example, I do something called earthing. If you don't, if you don't know what that is, it's where you walk barefoot on grass, mud, or sand. Um, obviously, I choose grass because there's no sand around here really, um, unless I was driving to a beach. I think the uh, nearest one's first distant. Um, or first and or whatever it's called, I don't know. Um, but yeah, basically, um, I do it on uh, grass and I just walk on grass and uh, it's supposed to sort of lower lower your blood pressure, lower, um, you know, lower your kind of, uh, I wouldn't say anxious feelings, but what am I trying to say? Kind of just um, help you relax a little bit more, connect you with nature more. There's obviously a load of scientific health benefits to it as well. Um, so I do try and do that for more than an hour a day. Um, you don't have to do it for that long. I just like doing it for, for quite a while. Um, but even just doing it for five minutes or so, connecting with nature, you know, you, you're looking around the garden, you're seeing birds and bees or wherever you're doing it, you're doing it in a park or something, you're looking at the birds and the bees, you're hearing the different sounds, it's nice. I know that um, I actually had a anonymous um, coping strategy from someone who uh, I talked about the other week um, that was basically going on about nature and talking about how nature can be a big positive impact to anxiety de and depression. Um, and I think that even just doing that if you're feeling lonely within your business is quite nice as well because essentially we are all animals and even connecting with other animals, whether it, whether that's just the birds, the bees, whether that be, and, and there wasn't meant to be any euphemism or anything there, but um, whether that's, you know, the birds, the bees, the insects, maybe you've got a cat or a dog or something like that, or, you know, take them outside, connecting even in that way with nature and other animals, um, I think can certainly help you as well with your loneliness. So it doesn't necessarily just need to be going to a club or going exercising or going out with friends or anything like that it can be as simple as still just being with yourself however in nature or in in, in a different setting that um maybe is just more relaxing more of a relaxed setting um but yeah so i think i think that covers it really for um sort of um you know, actually feeling lonely within your business. I know there's probably a few different things I've not touched on. I could probably uh, come up with a lot more different ideas if given time to think about it. Um, but I, I think that mainly that covers it. You know, obviously, um, if you have, even if let's say you have like grandparents or you have people um, who maybe, let's say maybe can't they can't get out as much, but you're comfortable with driving, um, then you could obviously drive to them, you could see them, that's another form of uh, beating that loneliness. And the beautiful thing about that is that 
most older people, uh, sadly, unfortunately, um, can be quite lonely. Even, you know, even if they have got a spouse still alive, they can be quite lonely because sometimes they can't do, or they feel as if they can't do as much as they used to. Um, I think that some older people kind of tend to let their age, um, and I don't, I'm not trying to belittle any older people by saying this, um, because I don't know how I'm going to be when I'm older. I might end up fitting into this category when I'm older, but I do feel like certain people, um, when they're older, kind of let their age become a factor of what they can do or they feel they can do. So, um, for example, if you get to 80, um, you know, subconsciously you feel like, um, oh, I can't do this anymore because I, actually I'm getting up in age and, it, you know, it's a psychological effect. So, and obviously that can't necessarily be helped, but um, sometimes maybe certain older people could could actually do more more than they are doing, but it's just that little bit of a lack of confidence that comes with older age, and that, that is quite sad to a certain extent. So um, actually going out and seeing these people and sitting down, just having a cup of tea with them, chatting to them, that's brilliant. I mean, we could talk about volunteering and doing that if you've got a little bit of free time that you can set aside outside your business. Volunteering is a great way to uh, beat that loneliness, obviously on the days or mornings or the hours or whatever structure you're volunteering with. On the time that you are volunteering, um, I'm assuming it's going to be a place where it is, uh, where there are a few other employees or volunteers there or, or whoever you're helping. Maybe it's in an old people's home, maybe the uh, older people are there to, to commune with. But basically, there's all these different ways, you know, that can really help you and can also help and benefit the other people, especially with volunteering. It's benefiting you because it's getting yourself out there and obviously, um, you know, talking to people and doing all that stuff, being social. But also it's helping other people, whether it be volunteering at a charity shop, volunteering at an old people's home, anything like that. You're helping people on the receiving end of that. Uh, maybe it's the old people themselves in the home. Maybe it is um, the, you know, the children in Africa or wherever um, that that charity is supporting. Or maybe it's um, children in the UK that it's supporting. You're then helping them. And also with volunteering and doing something like that that is... Um, kind of more of, uh, you know, you do something out of the good of your heart, you're actually being able to uh, fulfill yourself more. And aside from that as well, on maybe a slightly more selfish note, um, it does get you some brownie points with your CV. I mean, you can put that on your CV and it gets you some brownie points with um, employers in the future if you so have an employer in the future, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I think we'll wrap that up there. I actually realised that I've not got a quote um, today, but, oh wait, let me go, yeah, I've not got a quote, so I'm just going to flick on to quote, but the good thing is, the good thing is, I actually made one up, I did say that some weeks I'll actually say one of the quotes that I made up, I was um, feeling quite down on Monday morning, um, you could almost say depressed actually, it was quite... It was quite intense feelings. I was very uh, and 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 this was on Sunday as well. It was actually Sunday and Monday. I was feeling like this. I don't really like using the word depressed because I know that depressed somewhere I've read that um, depression is where you're feeling consistently down over a period of two weeks or more. So obviously I wasn't feeling consistently down for over two weeks. So I don't really like using the word uh, depression because I think it dilutes the 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 description of it really. Um, however, I will say that it was an intense feeling, and I was feeling quite down, um, and that was Sunday and Monday, and I was uh, went to auction viewing actually on the Monday, and I didn't actually give any effort. I uh, walked up the stairs, because uh, it's upstairs for viewing, and uh, I had about 51 lots I was meant to look at, so quite a lot of lots, and um, I basically went up and I did a measly little look round, and I thought, I don't want to do, I don't want to be here kind of thing, da 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 um, And it was only because my anxiety and my mental health was uh, taking over a little bit. It wasn't necessarily to do with the fact that I really didn't want to be there. Um, I actually really love going around auctions, I love the viewing and all that sort of stuff. However, in that particular moment, I was feeling um, 
quite down, I wasn't feeling, you know, I didn't have a straight head, um, and it made me just not want to be there necessarily, so even though, as I say, it's something I love, so um, I made up this little quote, I was just like walking around, not really bothering looking at things properly, uh, which was quite odd because I didn't look at things properly, however, I got a really good amount of stuff from the auction, so I don't know how that worked out. Well, to be honest, I think the competition wasn't as fierce this week, I don't know why, which was always good, you know, when you can get an auction that the competition isn't too bad in, because most of the time it is quite fierce, the competition at auctions. But, you know, I still got, I got quite a few uh, different bits and bobs. I got about 20 out of the 51 lots, uh, which is pretty good for me as a percentage um, sort of winnings. That's about 40% of my lots. Now, I'd normally get about 20 to 30% of my lots, so about 40% of my lots, something like that. That's pretty good, in my opinion, um, for, for what I'm used to anyway. Um, but anyway, I made this quote up, and I walked out of the viewing, and I didn't really do much in there. Um, but as I say, I did get some good stuff at the end of the day, so... So it's not all, uh, not all of a loss. And then Monday afternoon, I had my counselling session, and it and it really did cheer me up. It made me so much brighter, and it gave me the strength to do um, as well as my own personal strength, or, or it gave me the strength from my inner self, let's say, of uh, doing the swimming on the on the Wednesday, which was brilliant. But I'll just read this one out now. It's just a silly little quote. I made it up on the on the fly. I wasn't feeling very great at the time, so. I don't know whether it means anything, but you determine whether it means anything. I just make these quotes up randomly. So, the quote is, and I'll, I'll repeat it twice for you, so then you can uh, obviously hear it properly. Um, it's not about finding what you love, it's about loving what you find. So, that is, it's not about what you love, it's about loving what you find. And, um... It, I don't know why, but in the moment, because I was quite down, and I was looking around these lots, and I was thinking, oh, I'm not in the mood for this, da 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 that's where the kind of, it's not about finding what you love bit comes in, because I was thinking to myself, well, I do love going around the auctions, I do love doing reselling, but then I thought to myself, but right now, in this moment, I don't love it, um... So I thought to myself, well, it actually isn't about finding what you love. And then I looked at, I, I, I walked out, and this was all done in my head. It was kind of, this quote was being constructed slowly in my head while I was walking around. And then, uh, so that was going around in my head, that first bit, um, when I was looking at a few of the lots. It's not about finding what you love. And then I was taken over to, it was basically like a little balcony area. Well, not balcony area. What's it called? Like a... Um, Oh, I don't like a land. That's it. Yeah, landing. So there's a landing area um, outside the main sort of room upstairs, and then there's loads of pictures on the walls. There's boxes around here and there, you know, of lots, and it's just an extension of of uh, where they can put the lots for the auction, really. And there was this big, massive painting on the wall. I forgot what it was, but. I, I can't believe I forgot what it was, because it was only three days ago, but I forgot what it was. Yeah, I mean, that just proves that I wasn't really in the headspace, you know, at the moment. Otherwise, I would have remembered it. But um, I, I just looked at this painting, and I know that it had, like, a, a nice gilt frame on it. Very, very thick gilt frame. Very, very heavy painting. Or I would have assumed it was very heavy. I didn't pick it up. Um, but I, I looked at this painting, and I thought, I really love that. You know, I really love that. And then the last bit of the quote came in. It's about finding what it's about loving what you find because I was I was looking around and I was thinking I love this sort of stuff but I, today I don't love it it's not it's not necessarily about finding what you love and then I came across this picture and I thought that's it it's loving what you find so I don't know whether it makes any sense but I thought it was a pretty cool quote um, that was just made up on the fly. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And again, today, I don't believe we've got any questions. I will flick onto it. So as always, drop your questions down below if you have any. If you don't, then that's cool. Um, I don't know what the topic is going to be next week. So I apologize, but I will um, obviously think of one during the week. If you have any suggestions for the topic, then please do get in touch down below. Or on any of my social media um, accounts, I'll just go back to... Where is it? That one there. Um, 
any of these social media accounts we've got my instagram and my, my facebook right there facebook is adam robinson reseller and my instagram handle is at adsrobo96 so if you have any coping strategies any questions that you would like me to share on this podcast and share with the wider community then please do let me know obviously by going to Facebook, my Facebook or my Instagram, or by popping a comment down below. If you would like to share your story, then please do uh, feel free to do that. I've run a direct message to me if you would like to remain anonymous or in the comments down below. And if you would like me to share your story on the podcast, I'm quite happy to do that. But please do put within the comment on the YouTube uh, obviously under the YouTube video, please do put for, for me to be aware. Um, I want, I, I'm happy for you to share this or please put, I'm not happy to, for you to share this or something like that. But I'm assuming that if you put a comment down below in the YouTube section, then you should be okay with me sharing that because that gets broadcast on the video publicly anyway. But yeah, anyway, I'll leave it there guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I will see you in the next video. I don't know what that is going to be. Maybe a haul video, something like that, because I've got quite a few items incoming from the auction. So maybe a haul video and I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed it, as always, please do leave it a like. And don't forget, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. So I'll see you very soon, guys.